excited to, to have this short talk. Uh, introduction about myself. Uh, like he said, my name is Casey Jones. I'm from North Carolina, back in the U.S., and I work at RTI, which is a research institute of about 5,000 people. Uh, the team that I'm on is about 25 data scientists, and we're kind of an internal consulting leg of RTI. So I don't have any expertise in criminal justice or medicine or a very particular branch, uh, but rather all the, the larger teams at RTI come to our team and ask for help uh, when it comes to data. Uh, and so well, this role match package, uh, it was a, a group that came together. Um, I list their names here. And they said, hey, we've got this idea. And so they did some coding. And then they came to us or my team and said, can you turn that into an R package? And then can you go to other places like Australia and tell them what we've done? Um, so I'm going to be going over this rolling entry matching methodology um, and, and how we turn that into an R package. Uh, so just a few topics I'll talk about, uh, the motivation behind what this package does, and an introduction to propensity scoring, if you're not familiar. A uh, quick introduction to the, the methodology itself. We'll go through a quick example um, of how you would use the package. And then I'll probably just skip the slide that has all the parameter details for the package, like what your options are and what they do. Um, I'll show it, and then I'll skip it, because I don't, I don't want to cover it. Um, so for experimental design, um, the gold standard is the randomized controlled trial. Right, when you're learning about design, this is the first thing that you hear about, and it's, uh, it's kind of where you, you have 200 people in a room, and you randomly assign 100 of them to uh, be in the control group and 100 of them to be in the treatment group. And so what that would look like is you give the treatment group uh, a pill that actually does something, right? You've all seen this before, and then a, the control group would get the placebo pill that doesn't do anything at all. Uh, and so that's kind of the gold standard for experimental uh, design. But there's a problem there. You can't always uh, randomly pick 100 people in 100 people. It's not always possible, and it's not always ethical to do so. So if you're trying to do this for every experiment, you're going to run into some issues. Uh, an example for that would be if we wanted to look at the effects of smoking for a group of people that had never smoked before, I couldn't just pick the left half of you and say, hey, you're going to smoke for the next six months. It's, uh, it's unethical. You're going to get sick. or you're, Maybe you'll die. Uh, lots of things could happen to you. So this is obviously a problem um, that the randomized control trial cannot handle. Uh, propensity scoring, though, is a technique for matching treated individuals to controlled individuals uh, when you don't have the ability to pick uh, or it's unethical to pick. Um, and it's usually done using something like logistic regression because it's a binary outcome. Either you had the treatment or you did not have the treatment. Uh, and what it does is it just matches the treatment individuals to control individuals based on the probability that you would have actually entered into the study. But propensity scoring uh, has some issues as well. Uh, and I forgot that I had pictures at the bottom. But basically, if we had nine people that smoked, we could find a group of nine people that do not smoke and match them based on um, some probability. But propensity scoring has some issues. It's not designed for rolling entry studies, hence the name of our R package. A uh, rolling entry study would be uh, where people don't always start the treatment at the same time. And it's not designed for studies where the control group um, has some missing information. So in our smoking example, the people that didn't smoke, well, they don't have an entry period because they never started smoking. So that causes a, a big problem. Uh, rolling entry matching, though, is a propensity score matching technique um, for these studies, these rolling entry studies. Uh, it requires a group of individuals that did the study, that's going to be, or that did the treatment, that's going to be our treatment group. And it uh, requires a group that did not receive the treatment, that's going to be the control group. An example of this um, would be a hip replacement. So hip replacement is a good example because um, not all 100 people that got this new hip replacement would get it on the same day. Um, the doctor would be very busy if it was trying to do 100 hip replacements in the same day. Uh, so that's a rolling entry study. Um, what you do with rolling entry is you match individuals based on static covariates. So their race, their sex, their date of birth, things that do not change. You match it on dynamic covariates, so their health conditions, uh, their activity levels, all these things that could change over time. Uh, and the last thing you match on is the time itself. Uh, we want to look at a treatment person and a control person um, that could have started this treatment at the same time. 
And so what that generally looks like is a panel data set uh, because you want as much information on them as possible, especially those dynamic covariates that are changing over time, such as your health conditions. Um, you can think if you're taking a pill or you've got some condition that you need looked at, uh, your health conditions could be very variable. Uh, what our package requires is a formula. So we want to know the covariates that you're trying to match these individuals on. We need to know the time variable. So when uh, the data was collected, we need an entry variable that says when the treatment individuals actually started um, this intervention or this treatment. And then a look back variable, which is um, important because uh, say that uh, I was going to go on a weight loss pill and my doctor said, hey, six weeks from now, you're going to go on this pill. Well, it's pretty uh, good chance that over the next six weeks, I may eat a lot of stuff that I wouldn't eat normally because it's my last chance to eat that type of stuff. So my health conditions could change um, from the time I was told I will start and the time I actually do start some treatment. So let's look at an example. Let's look at some data. Um, and let's see what this actually looks like when the package is running. So for our example, let's just test the effect of some intervention. It doesn't matter. It could be the hip replacement. It could be smoking. It could be the placebo, not placebo, um, anything. Um, we're going to just assume that our patients visit a doctor on a monthly basis so that we can have this panel data set where we have data for this person every single month. We'll let our look back equal one because we'll say the doctor told the person a month beforehand that they were going to start this study. And then a uh, control group is going to be individuals that go to that doctor but did not receive some intervention or some pill or uh, were forced to smoke. Uh, so the first step is we have this panel data set of treatment data. Uh, what it looks like is just the treatment variable saying yes they were treated, um, some time variable saying when it was collected, and an entry variable saying the time that they actually entered into the study. And we're just going to quickly trim that down based on that look back variable that you said. I'm only going to look at information that's one time period back from when they entered. Step two is going to be to uh, trim this control group. And so we trim that based on the time variable because we want control observations that could have entered this intervention at the same time as the treatment observations. So any control line that doesn't match a treatment line is going to be removed. Um, and so that's what we do in step two. Step three, we're going to calculate propensity scores just like any other person calculates propensity scores. Uh, the package has a few different options for how you uh, would calculate them. Um, and then you're going to calculate the difference between all the treatment and all the um, control observations. And that looks like this large table here. So we're comparing all the treatment IDs to all the control IDs. And the difference column is how different their propensity scores were. Uh, a couple of good examples to point out is this one here where I compared Z to A. Um, their probability of being selected into the study is uh, almost the same. So they would probably get matched with uh, the next step. But a different example would be this first line item uh, where their scores were completely different. So we would hope that X and A were, would never be matched because um, A has a very low likelihood of ever uh, receiving the treatment versus X in time period one was almost certainly guaranteed to get the treatment. Um, and so it, the next step, once we have that full list of comparisons, is to trim it down. Because as you just saw in the last example, there are some rows where they're so completely different, you would hope they never get matched. Uh, and so our package uh, has a few different options for how you would trim that down. You, you don't want, um, if, that, if that first line was the only thing left, they would be forced to get matched. So we try to trim it down to get rid of matches that uh, we don't want to ever pick up. And then the last step, uh, which I'm just going to hand wave over, is the assigning of the matches because uh, there's a lot of steps that go on in the background there. And uh, if I told you how it all works, then what fun would that be? Uh, it'd be a lot of, I don't know, then you could just do it yourself. But instead, you have to use my package. So um, there's a, a matching algorithm that goes through and says, let's find all the best optimal matches. Um, let's discard the ones that we, we shouldn't be using. And then if there are... Um, a couple of treatments that go to the same control, how do we handle that? If there's a few controls that go to the same treatment, how do we handle that? So 
I know I'm just kind of hand waving, but there is several rules and steps that handle all of those decisions that have to be made. Um, and in the end, we get a nice list of all the treatment observations and all the control observations that match to it. Um, so for rolling entry matching, we, we had to take care of these two major issues. One, it's not, or propensity scoring is not designed for rolling entry studies. So we handle that by adding in the time variable. And then it's not designed for um, control groups that are missing information, that don't have this baseline or don't have an intervention period. And we handle that as well because our algorithm kind of says, um, well, what if the control group were to go at this time period or this time period and we're able to um, test the treatment compared to all of those possible controls. So we get rid of the first and the second issue that propensity scoring faces. Um, I think I have a minute, so maybe I will actually go over these. Um, our, our package is kind of robust. It gives you the ability to do different types of propensity scoring, whether it's logistic or probit. Um, you can match on the p-score or the logit of the p-score. Um, you can match with or without replacement. So if you want your control data, say you only have 100 control data observations, but you have a lot of treatment observations, maybe you want the controls to match to multiple. Um, so you can say with or without replacement. Um, and then one of the, the future goals for our, our package is to say, well, I want at least three matches, but it has to meet this criteria as well. So trying to give the user the ability to specify maybe a minimum number of matches, but also some other criteria as to how good the match actually has to be before you would assign that many matches. Um, that's not in the package right now, but that's a, a next step. Um, the alpha selection, so the alpha goes into the, um, the cutoff. And uh, I've read a, a paper on this, and in my paper, um, I have this like one page proof because I have a background in mathematics and all of my advisors are like, why do you have this proof in this paper on propensity scoring? And I said, well, I'm a mathematician, so I have to have a proof in there. Um, but your, your options are these different like standard deviation calculations. And so um, if you pick an alpha and a standard deviation, well, it's going to trim your pool differently. So um, I added the proof in there because we show that there are two different standard deviation calculations and they're only the same in certain circumstances. Uh, so that's one of the um, like biggest lacking areas, I think, in this propensity scoring is that both of those standard deviations are just used interchangeably, but they're not actually the same. Um, so if the user cares how much uh, their package or our package actually trims, then there's a, a big section on that in the paper. Um, and then how you would actually optimally pick your alpha value. Um, but no time to go over that. And then lastly, our, our package offers a lot of output. So you can see what was matched, how was it matched, how well did it do. Um, it gives some base R output as well as to the propensity score model, um, you know, how well that model actually matched to the data. And then lastly, uh, just some references. So the first one, um, like I said, this is not my methodology. It's the group from RTI that I worked with. So I cited their paper. And then I have um, written a paper on this to go into the R journal. So I didn't want to self-plagiarize. Uh, so I cited myself. Um, that's, that's all I have for you. <laughs>